Hello, this is Austin with Josh's Frogs, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a giant African bullfrog enclosure. Uh, this one is just your basic setup. It doesn't have to be bioactive um, for these guys. So first, we're gonna wanna set up the substrate layer. Like so. I always want to mention, this is one of the most important parts of setting up your frog's enclosure, is adding the water to your substrate. So, I wanna go and add the water and mix it up so that it is pretty even throughout. I'm gonna move him back here. And the saturation level that you're gonna to wanna to aim for when mixing anything that has a large amount of cocoa fiber in it is when you take a handful and you squeeze it. You can maybe get a couple of drops of water to come out, but it's gonna hold its shape pretty well after you open your hand back up. So this is pretty good. I'm gonna make sure that I get down in the corners because a lot of times that's where some of the dry substrate hides. But after that, it should be good to go. Now, if you want, it's not necessary, um, but you can add live plants. So live plants, um, I'm gonna recommend vining plants for these frogs because they do like to burrow. Um, and if you're dealing with a plant that has just a single stalk or a single root structure and the pixie frog decides that it wants to dig right under that, it's gonna uproot your plant, it's gonna cause it to fall over. And if this happens over and over and over again, the plant is not gonna thrive. And in some scenarios, it might even die. Um, another way you can prevent that from happening is to bury it in its plant pot, um, like so, so that it's nice and stabilized, and the frog is not going to be able to burrow itself too much into that, especially when it's a frog that's this size. Um, and this is also just your basic setup, your first setup. Um, you can scale up to larger, and it is recommended to scale up to larger when your frog does get to be about this size. Because um, as you can see, a frog that's this size, it's not gonna be happy in an enclosure that's this size. Um, you're wanting to probably, with a male, scale up to something that's about 30 gallons, um, which is equivalent to an Exoterra's 18, 24, 18, and that would be a minimum um, for a male. Females are a little bit smaller, um, this is a male, you can tell by the nice bright orange coloration right here, um, and by the head shape, females are much more just kind of rounded um, in this species. And it's where they get the name of their genus, the pixie frog, uh, pixie cephalus, small head. Next, we're gonna add a water dish. Uh, since this is going to be for a smaller frog than the one that I've been showing off, um, it just needs to be a water dish that is able to hold the entire frog. Uh, so at this size of enclosure for a younger pixie frog, that's only gonna be about an inch to an inch and a half, you're only gonna need a small water dish. As the frog ages, the water dish is going to need to be increased in size. Uh, we do sell corner dishes that are large enough to hold an adult pixie frog. Next, we're gonna add some leaf litter. And this just is going to provide some humid hides for the pixie frog when it's still small. Um, one of the main issues that first time frog owners deal with is having uh, the substrate dry out on the top and just being able to keep up with the substrate drying out 
with misting and going through that periodically. Um, if where you are keeping your frog is going to be on the cooler side in the low 70s or in the high 60s, uh, you are going to add or need to add some excess or extra heat. Um, these heat mats just go right on the bottom of the enclosure and the frogs will burrow down to find that heat uh, so that they can be at a comfortable level. Um, but you don't want it to cover the entire bottom because it can um, cause too much heat and you want to allow the frog to be able to thermoregulate on its own. Um, when the frogs are younger, like the one that I have here, you're most likely not going to need to worry about it biting you. But it's hard to believe that a frog that's this size can one day grow to be a frog that is this size. Um, we're going to keep these guys as far away from each other as possible because they are known to be cannibalistic. Um, so we're going to set this guy right in here and he's going to hop around. At this size, you can simply just add the food to the enclosure and your frog will follow it around and hunt it. They're more active than um, Pac-Man frogs, which are similar in how we set them up, um, but not completely similar in how they behave in an enclosure. Uh, pixie frogs are a little bit more active. They're going to move around a bit more. Uh, they're going to have uh, more of a hunting reflex to go after things that they see are moving around and not just kind of sit and wait in a hole. Um, so if we were to add crickets in here over on the opposite side of the enclosure that the frog was in, eventually he'd notice that there's movement, kind of get curious and move around and then go and eat. Um, as your frog gets older though, you, and you want to feed it larger prey items that might be too fast for it. We do recommend uh, feeding tongs, so things like night crawlers, cockroaches that will like to burrow and just not be accessible to the frog. Um, we recommend a longer size tong for this species just because these guys do have very large, t um, they're called odontoid processes. They're actually part of the frog's jaw, but they're very, very sharp. Um, pointy processes on the bottom and on the top and if they get a hold of you um, they might be able to bite hard enough that they can e even break your skin so we want to prevent that if at all possible so tongs are definitely the way to go when feeding your adult pixie frog something that is going to need to be tong fed thank you for watching this video and I hope that now you have a little bit more information on how to set up a giant pixie frog enclosure Thanks so much for watching this video. Here at Josh's Frogs, bringing nature to your doorstep is more than just our mission, it's our passion. We want you to have the most successful experience possible. So we're going to be here for you before, during, and after your purchase. Whether that's with our captive bred animals, plants, insects, or the wide variety of their care products on our website. You always have access to our dedicated customer service team, on-site nature experts, hundreds of free articles via our blog, and many more videos right here on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. We're always happy to help. Just shoot us an email or give us a call. You can find all of this information and more at joshesfrogs.com. Thanks again and see you next time.